Hey everyone, thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're going to be talking about the logarithmic regression band, the primary band fit to um, theoretical non-bubble data for the total cryptocurrency market cap. So not just Bitcoin, not just Ethereum, but the total cryptocurrency market cap, including all, all coins. Um, so if you guys like this content, please subscribe to the channel and uh, uh, hit the thumbs up button. Um, I would appreciate it if you check out the Telegram channel in the description below. We are approaching 1,800 members, so um, feel free to check that out and, and join in on the discussions. Um, and let's go ahead and jump in. So again, we're looking at a uh, the total cryptocurrency market cap on a log scale. Um, and note that just for reference, 10 to the 12 is 1 trillion. Um, so you know we, we almost came up to 1 trillion during the last bull market. Um, and, and obviously, right now we're we're quite a bit below that. Um, but this this actually is is from uh, when I made this chart before we even entered into 2020. So if you go back and look at my older videos, um, I have this chart back in uh, uh, late last year. Um, so continuing on, I've added in the new data, and what you can see here is is that we have. Uh, let's see. We have our our price, which is the which is this white curve, um, and the green line is the the regression band, and then the red points are what this primary regression band is fit to, um, and and the reason why we have a band is is just because, you know, having a single line with a with a market as volatile as cryptocurrency doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So in general, we say you know it's typically it's it's best to get into the markets. When the price or the the market cap of crypto is it is within this primary regression band. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean it's necessarily predictive for the future. But just looking at historical data, this would have been the times, the best times to get in. Um, and you can see that since the last time we posted this, we you know we came down, and then since then we actually bounced back up a little bit. So continuing, you know, continuing this trajectory, you know, we, we wonder where we might go if we were to continue these types of trends. Well, the first thing I want to talk about is, I, and I've talked about it before, is the difference between the, or the percent difference between the price and the bottom band, so the very bottom part of this graph, so the percent difference. If we were to plot that for each, um, for the entire price data, so this would correspond to the first peak, second peak, and third peak. And if we were to draw a imaginary, um, sorry about that. If we were to draw an imaginary, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. If we were to draw an imaginary line, you could see where we more or less are in a in a downtrend with respect to this multi-year um, trend in the difference between the price that you can see here and that lower band. So you can see that each each market cycle we do not go up quite as high which supports the you know the the, um, the hypothesis or the theory that we will experience diminishing returns each market cycle so I would say that uh, theoretically our next uh, projection or our next big goal would be moving back above this regression band that we've been showing and, and obviously getting significantly above it sometime maybe out in 2022 or, or that time frame. Obviously it could happen in 2021, it could happen in 2023, but here we're just showing a, a projection out to 2022 and thinking that that might be the case. So let's go back to our regression line and look at the look at the trends to again try to try to project where we might go. So if we were to First, let's just go ahead and draw the line. So this is where, you know, this is one potential scenario. Um, but let's draw a trend line. So if we draw it from bottom to top of each market cycle, and then we're just extending it out, and then we draw bottom to top, bottom to top. And then here, if we were to draw bottom to a futuristic theoretical top, we, you know, we might think, okay, well, maybe the market, the total cryptocurrency market cap will do something like this, where you know, we stay in the regression band for a while, but, you know, continue to increase, maybe not monotonically, but potentially, you know, where we, where we oscillate, you know, up and down for a while uh, before ultimately, or hopefully before we would hopefully come out of it and peak. Uh, my target is, is around, you know, $10 trillion or so, um, plus or minus a couple trillion. But at that point, what's a couple trillion among friends? 
So let's say that we do this. If we were to continue to move up, then uh, you know a, a potential pro, uh, pro, total market cap projection would be around ten trillion dollars, and you can see it's more or less in line with this trend that we see um, with diminishing returns and also extending the time to see those diminishing returns. So if we just again plot this curve back on here, that which is the percent difference between the price and the lower band, then you can see that you know we would at some point we would theoretically come back up uh, corresponding to this move here and peak at some point and then move into the next bear market. So I hope this is informative for everyone. We like to, you know, we really like to look at, at the bigger picture of, of the cryptocurrency markets. We're not bogged down by the day to day. I would say, you know, go live your life. There's a lot to do. Don't spend the next, I, I, at least for me, I, I don't think it's important that everyone spends every waking moment of the day looking at, at the price. Um, clearly, I do spend a lot of time doing it because I'm trying to provide content for everyone, but I don't think that in general it's it's really that healthy to be looking at the price every five minutes. You know, look at the longer term trend, and usually the trend is your friend. It's just, you know, we're, we are theoretically, we are in a, in a band area that has historically been a good time to buy um, cryptocurrency. Now clearly not all of those cryptocurrencies are gonna are ever gonna take off. There's gonna be plenty that don't ever hit their all-time high. Um, there's gonna be plenty that just keep going down from where they currently are. Uh, that's why I would say, you know, if, if you think of it like a, a horse race, you know, what horses are you betting on? Are you gonna bet on, you know, some of the big race horses that are have really good odds, or are you gonna, you know, are you gonna bet on the donkey that is is sitting in the back and and can barely move um, uh, even if the rest of the market's moving. So you know, just consider that. I, I I'm not saying you can't invest or you shouldn't invest in in certain projects, but um, you know, this is not financial advice. This is just you know, manage your risk in a way that you don't want to be left behind. Because if you you know, if you if you just say throw a dart at 20 coins in the top 1,000 and then just hope it works out then, you know, your horses might be left at the gate once, um, if, if the next bull market breaks out. And, and that probably would not be a good feeling if that were to happen to you. Um, so just make sure you're managing your risk appropriately. Appropriately, Make sure you are investing in coins that you, you really do believe in and not just ones that have a low market cap just because you think, oh, well, the market cap's low, therefore it must go... Um, you know, to ten billion dollars or something. Uh, so you know, just consider that. Um, and again, if you if you guys do like the content, you can check out my Patreon page uh, where I do post you know fairly frequent updates for for different things. So you can, if you want to join the patron only chat room um, and get risk updates that I talk about for different coins and look at other macro level charts that I'll occasionally post. And I usually post the PDFs and whatnot from these videos into this um, uh, tier. Then, then you can check that out. Um, and then we also have subscriptions to various research reports. So this one uh, will include Bitcoin letters, and then this one is Ethereum letters and altcoin letters. Uh, so check those out. Uh, if you guys, if you guys don't want to, you know, join Patreon because you don't want to deal with fiat, I do accept cryptocurrency. Um, so you know, just uh, send me a message on on Telegram or something, um, and I'll, I'll get back to you. So. Um, I think that'll wrap it up for this video. I hope this has been informative. We're going to continue to, you know, continue to look at the charts throughout the throughout the cycle. Continue to assess where we are in the in the market cycle. Um, we're not going to be stressing about about you know daily ten percent losses, thirty percent losses. You know, even with Bitcoin in the last in the last bull run, even when it was going from like, you know, $200, $300, all the way up to $20,000, it had corrections up upwards of 30 to 40%. So, I mean, you know, if, if you consider, if you consider how even Bitcoin, which is the market mover, can experience heavy corrections, then you have to acknowledge that other coins, which will, are, are more volatile than Bitcoin, they typically go down further when Bitcoin goes down and their percentage increases also um, can be a lot higher than Bitcoin's you have to consider that that's just the name of the game and if you can't handle the heat then this is not right this is not the right kitchen for you um so just take that into consideration focus on the bigger picture you know focus on on the rest of life 
um, and we'll we'll continue we'll continue tracking this for the next uh, several years. So um, again, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.